in the span of 2019 to 2020, so around pandemic time, wherein I almost lost both my parents mm-hmm. within the span of like literally a year. So I heard. Hi everyone and welcome to a new episode of So I Heard, a safe space where we answer your burning questions by debunking myths and sharing stories all around insurance. Today I'm joined by Justine and Michelle from Her Do It. And before we kick off our session, we're going to listen to a quick message that we have from Sarah. To be honest, I feel like insurance is like an extra bill for me. And I consider myself pretty healthy and like I've never been to hospital before. And also I make like 4000 a month and I'm renting a room. So I actually have quite a lot of bills to pay. Thank you, Sarah, for sharing your message with us. Something that I'm picking up from Sarah's message, guys, let me know what you think about this, is Gen Zs generally do not care about insurance. Yeah, I I have to disagree with that. Uh, Personally, I have had insurance pretty much all my life. My parents got it for me when I was really young, and then as I grew older and I entered the workforce, I eventually took over paying for it myself. I started off on like quite a basic salary, like I think most of us do. And when that was happening, I would pay about half of my insurance. My parents would cover the other half, so they did help out a lot. And then as I got a promotion, I ended up paying like the entire thing. Yeah, I don't think Gen Z's necessarily not care about insurance. I think there's just so much going on in their lives. There's right. so much to spend on that maybe insurance is the last thing that they're thinking yeah. about. Perhaps for Gen Z's, the first exposure they will ever have to insurance is their company's insurance plan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you uh, find that the case with you as well, just you? It wasn't my first time seeing insurance because I had like my personal insurance, Mm -hmm. but it definitely did make me feel a lot more safe and secure having that extra like level of insurance because I have my personal insurance and I also have the company insurance. So if anything, I should be pretty covered from like all angles. Yeah. But I do know that a lot of my peers, the ones that are working, see that their company insurance is, that's enough. I don't need any other insurance besides that. It's the word insurance is there pretty much. So who needs a personal insurance and a company insurance when you have company insurance insurance done? Yeah, more so they might not know the difference. The difference, you yeah. Know? yeah. Yeah. I think Justine is a rare case. Like, she <laughs> knows so much about insurance already. But I do think that for a lot of people, they only have their company provided insurance yeah. plan. Mm-hmm. And I think that is a common misconception that it's enough. In fact, I think just relying on your company's insurance is not enough, especially mm-hmm. if you may have a very big emergency that comes up. Yeah. So definitely pile that up. That is your first layer. And that's probably quite limited in terms of the coverage. But definitely have your own layer of insurance. And you never know whether you have to leave your job for some reason, you want to mm-hmm. pursue something else. And you don't want to not have coverage and that to hold you back from doing something that you want for yeah. yourself. Yeah, because once you leave the company, then what happens to your insurance mm-hmm. if you don't have one of your yeah, own, And right? what happens if something happens then... Do you want to be like left scrambling, trying to figure out what do I do? Where do I look? Call the company. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Can I have it back? Can I come back? (laughs) Um, But I think like what Michelle said, you're quite a rare case, right? (laughs) I'm not sure if it's an actual reflection of of your friends or Gen Z's in general. Um, What do you see amongst your peers in terms of, you know, what they think about insurance and their approach to it, especially when they do start working Mm -hmm. and having money of their own? I think the main thing is that a lot of uh, my peers, they don't see insurance as such an important thing because it seems like a very expensive, daunting task for them to take on. When they just enter the workforce, they have other things to worry about. They have to worry about rent. They have to worry about you know, if they're sending money back to their family. Yeah, food, transport. So with all these things piling up, insurance for a young person who sees themselves as like virtually indestructible, yeah, we, I don't think we need that yet. Maybe in the future, as like health issues start to like come along, mm-hmm. but now I think I'm good. I see a lot of my like, peers have that; s- they share that same sentiment. Yeah. You know, I know that yeah, health issues can come at any time, so it's better for us to start getting insurance now. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, definitely, like uh, Michelle and I were probably slightly older, <laughs> but um, you know, it's different for everyone. But even growing up, for me, I relate to uh, you know a lot of the thoughts that you had shared. Mm-hmm. But how was it for you then, Michelle? Is it a similar story as well? I think I have a similar story to Justine, yeah. and hopefully we are not the rare case. <laughs> my parents bought me my first insurance policy, and I didn't really know what, was, what it consisted of as well until I had my first job and had my company insurance plan. I actually had an accident 
of sorts mm. and that's when I had to rely on my insurance. At a point of time, I was lucky that my company insurance um, layer was enough for myself but it definitely made me look into my insurance policy mm -hmm. and whether I needed more for myself. So that's my exposure to insurance. And I think like sometimes... I don't know. I mean, I think you're the best person as the youngest on yeah. our panel for today, our Gen Z rep, uh, to kind of weigh in on it. But it might not be a case of even prioritizing it, but maybe it's just the fact that, you know, you start your first job. Mm -hmm. Like what Sarah said, she has so many other things to yeah. pay for. Do Gen Zs then think that they just can't afford it? Definitely. I mean, when you have other things to put your money towards that seem more important, I don't think a lot of us see insurance as something that needs the money right now. It's more of like a want than like a need for us to get it. Yeah. And I think that's fair for Gen Z's to feel because there's so much going on in their lives. But I think ultimately for them, it's about good financial management. Mm -hmm. right? When you start early, you don't have to pay so much money for insurance. You don't have to save so much, but then it can compound with time. So I think that's definitely like a mindset shift that they have to have. Yeah. For example, when Justine said that maybe people are thinking about it from the perspective of it being a want, not a need. But in fact, insurance is actually a need. Mm -hmm. Like your rent, food, transport, insurance should be top there for fixed expenses that you should have in your lives. So definitely a mindset shift needed for Gen Zs. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, yeah, definitely we need to like, you know, understand insurance a lot better. But I feel like the problem my peers have is that they don't know where to look. When you think of insurance, you think of something very kind of scary. Mm -hmm very wordy, there's a lot of different policies, where do I start? I feel that also kind of stops my peers or people my age from like pursuing insurance for themselves yeah. if they don't already like have it, like in my case for my parents. Mm -hmm. Then they should definitely talk to you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, our role model um, for Gen Z's and insurance today. But I think, Justine, you know, you, you bring up quite some interesting points and it's a lot to do with your own personal experience mm -hmm. like growing up and how that influenced why you're so proactive with yeah. taking insurance, right? Um, how has that sort of, you know, affected your decision in taking personal insurance? And, you know, not everyone might go through that, mm -hmm. but what was your experience? So my experience was, I kind of knew all the while that I had insurance. Like I've heard my parents like mention it offhandedly. I have some relatives who work in insurance. So I've seen them come over to the house and talk about these things. So it was always there. But when I was 12, my dad had a heart attack. Mm. And it was then that I really like understood that, okay, this is what insurance can do. Because he survived a heart attack and in his recovery, him not being able to work, is where we really like relied on insurance to help us out. Mm -hmm. It was even further made important in my life in the span of 2019 to 2020, so around pandemic time, wherein I almost lost both my parents. Mm -hmm. Within the span of like literally a year, uh, my mom had like a serious health complication, and then exactly a year later, it was my dad's turn. Thankfully, they are both fine now; they're still around. But it was watching this thing happen as like the eldest in the family that made me think wow, what's going to happen if we didn't have insurance? What happened to me? What would happen to our younger brother? What happened to him? Our education, our lives, literally. How would we maintain the lives that we have or even going forward in the future if we don't have some way to sustain ourselves? So it's from that point onwards that I said, okay, yeah, I need to take this more seriously. And when I started working like a year later, I took it on like officially. Like, yeah, I'm going to help with my insurance. Yeah, and I mean, it sounds like, you know, there's always some sort of trigger in mm -hmm. your personal experience that makes you start to think about all these things, yeah, but right? but you don't want that to be what like, reason yeah, pursues you. you to get Yeah, you don't want to wait until that point, mm -hmm. yeah. And was it similar for you, uh, Michelle, like growing up? What was your first exposure or, or reasons to start thinking about organising your own personal insurance? Yeah, so I grew up very lucky. I had my mom who was very financially savvy, so she taught me all about saving money and how to spend well. So I had this notebook where I wrote like how much I spend in a day, like one ringgit for a noodle soup, <laughs> like 50 cents for like Milo or whatever. Her daily daily, uh, diary entries. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I had. So I carried that up until I was in university where I continued to spend prudently and then save. I think that carries on until today and that's mm -hmm. why I started this platform to talk about personal finance. Right. Um, for me, one of the most important concepts is these three words that I always talk about, which is pay yourself first. So what does that even mean? Right? Yeah. How do you give yourself money? So it essentially means that you're paying your future self. 
for example, you're saving up for something in the future for yourself or you're investing towards your financial independence or your retirement and with insurance, you're protecting all your wealth or protecting yourself against something that may happen in the future. Right. So I think that to me is very important regardless of what age you're at but more importantly, if you can start at a young age like if you're currently a yeah, Gen Z. Definitely. I mean, it would be a lot easier I think to start now also when we are still young because as I said, when we grow older, things are going to start piling up. We're going, we're not going to get any younger. So health issues, financial issues, these things are going to start affecting us. Getting insurance now, when it's still everything's still quite okay, would probably be a lot easier for us to afford actually, Absolutely. compared to in the future when we really really need it. Yeah. yeah, and I mean it's just a matter of you know life planning, right? Mm-hmm. Essentially, and making sure that you're taking care of your future self. Um, and I mean, other than, you know, the priorities and um, the, the money involved with it, what other tips do you have for those, especially I think, Justine, for like friends that you might have or peers that are not really thinking about yeah. insurance now? Um, what kind of tips would you give them? I guess the main thing I'd say is don't be afraid to ask questions mm-hmm. and just make mistakes when it comes to these things. We're young. We can recover from our mistakes a lot easier. So just ask, ask every possible question. Really get that understanding of insurance now itself. Yeah, and if affordability is an issue, either think, we look at your expenses and think about what else you can cut that's a one and then introduce insurance as a need or set a milestone for yourself. Right. Let's say like Sarah who's making 4,000 ringgit a month, maybe you set yourself a milestone when you start making 4,500 ringgit a month is definitely the time you should start looking into introducing insurance to your expense. So that's what I would say. Thank you so much, ladies, for sharing your thoughts with us today. Again, we have Justine and Michelle from Her Do It. And thank you to Sarah as well for sharing your voice note um, with us. That's all we have for today. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. As usual, if you want to find out more information, you can head over to our website or speak to one of our wealth planners as well. Thank you, guys.